then as with any up app migration, sorry, it's important to make incremental changes. You should not try to update everything at once. So the first layer that I focused on was the app level um, layer. And this, this layer actually focused on navigation. Then the second layer was now the screen level. The content that is now displayed on the screen itself, is it configured correctly based on the current window size class? The third is to update the different components that are on the different screens. So basically making sure that they adapt and respond correctly when on a specific window size class configuration. Buon um, pomeriggio. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. Um, thank you for joining my talk. I will be talking to you today about window size classes and what they are, and particularly how you can use them or leverage them to be part of your software development process when you're building apps that are responsive across the multiple range of devices that we have on the market today. So, here we go revolutionizing app development across devices with window size classes. The future is here. Okay, so I am Ahmed Tekua. I'm a software engineer in Android. I'm based in the Netherlands, and I work for a company called Ball.com, which is an online shopping platform that operates in the Netherlands and in Belgium. I used to stay in Cape Town, um, and I relocated to the Netherlands last year. So it's, it's actually a year now that I've been in the Netherlands. And um, I am a Google developer expert in Android. And then you can also find me on Twitter using the handle Ahmed underscore Tequila. So the agenda for this talk, we're going to be talking about what are window size classes. Material design and window size classes, how did the two actually work together? Conceptualizing my designs for the different window size classes updating the app based on these different window size classes, touching on the code changes as well as the visual overview of how things have changed within the app. Then finally, the next steps. Does the journey to supporting window size classes end here or does it continue? So the first question is, what are window size classes? Window size classes are a set of opinionated viewport breakpoints that help you design develop, and test responsive and adaptive application layouts. The intent of these classes is to help developers balance the flexibility of layout optimization as well as layout simplicity. The amount of display area that you have for your, for your app is divided into three um, categories or three buckets. The first one is compact, then you have medium, then you have expanded. Now, the information that is contained within the, um, this information here is the width size class as well as the height size class. And then inside it, you will get information about what the current window size class is for either the width or the height. And then since most apps on the market right now generally have got scrolling content, the width window size class is the one that is recommended to be used. So you won't really use the height window size class. And within this presentation, I'll be focusing mostly on the width window size class. So in this slide here, you see the different window size classes. The compact window size class, which is the one that's on the far left, is for devices that have a width of less than 600 dp and represents about 99% of the phones that are in portrait in the market today. The, width, the medium width window size class is for devices that have a width of between um, 600 and 840 dp. And it represents about 93% of tablets that are in portrait, as well as large unfolded inner displays that are in portrait as well. Then you have expanded, which is the, the last one there on the right. And this caters for um, a width that is greater than 840 dp and represents about 97% of the tablets that are in landscape, as well as large unfolded inner displays that are also in landscape. The idea behind this is to break away from thinking or using the logic of is, is it a phone or is it a tablet? So this talk here will try to aim to help you to actually think broader than whether the app that you're designing for is on a phone or a tablet, but actually focusing on the range of devices in the market. So 
material design and window size classes. There is a dedicated section on the material design website that focuses on window size classes and how these different classes can be leveraged to build adaptive UIs that react to the current window size class configuration. I will share a link at the end. The opinionated material guidelines on designing based on window size classes is based on these guiding principles. The first principle being the available window space. So window space can change at any time and it's therefore dynamic. And then what the user does on the device also impacts the amount of screen space that will be available for your app at any, any particular point in time. For example, the user could use multi-window mode or they could unfold a foldable device. These, these changes that the user does impact the amount of space that you're gonna have available. The second guide is orientation changes. So when orientation changes, the window size class also changes as well. The window size of a typical phone that is in portrait mode is compact, but then when you rotate that device into landscape mode, it actually becomes expanded on certain smartphone screens. So it's something to bear in mind. With this in mind, this guide, like I said, is now trying to break you away from designing apps for is it a phone or is it a tablet, but rather to think about the amount of screen space or window space that you have available at any point in time. The recommendation from the guide is to design for one window size class, then in order to properly cater for the other window size classes, you start by asking these questions. The first question that you need to ask is what should be revealed? Now, as you can see here, certain content can be shown based on the current window size configuration by taking advantage of the additional screen space. An example here is the use of paints in this email app that you see there. So when it's on a compact or medium uh, window size class, you see there's a single pane, which is just a list of emails. And then when it goes to an expanded window size class, you add an additional pane, which is used to reveal the selected email in this, in this case. Then the second question that you ask is how to divide the screen. So the use of panes works best on um, certain window size classes. The compact and medium window size class works best with the single pane, but because the amount of screen space that you have is quite limited as compared to an expanded window size class, then on an expanded window size class, having two panes is what works best because now you have um, more space on the screen. So in a medium layout, you can actually add two panes but the problem now arises when both panes have got content that might actually require more space than the, there is available. So in those instances, it's recommended to then use a single pane for a medium um, window size class. And so a single pane layout also helps bring attention and focus to specific content if the need arises. For example, if the person is playing a video game, watching a video, or having a video call, then having a single pane will actually help the user focus on one particular task at a point in time, rather than having a distracted view. Then, the third question to ask is, what should be resized? So you have certain elements that form part of a compact UI, which can be resized when displayed on a medium or expanded window size class. So in this card example that you see there, the card shape can be resized based on the current window size class. The card could be horizontal, on a compact screen, then it could be more square or rectangular when on a medium or expanded um, device. The guide recommends resizing the cards, feeds, lists, and panes with the intent of enhancing certain parts such as images, typography, to basically make them more visible and legible for the user as the screen space gets bigger. The ideal length for text is 40 to 60 characters per every window size class. Then the fourth question is, what should be repositioned? So what is contained on a UI can be moved around to take advantage of the additional space available. By understanding that the bigger screen size, the higher the need to ensure that clickable elements on the screen can easily be reached by the user. So the guide proposes repositioning cards, adding an additional column of content, such as that of a news app thereby broadening what the content the user will be able to access. So in a news app, you could actually add multiple columns, for example. 
then you could create a complex layout or arrangement of photos that are displayed now that the screen space has actually increased when you're working with photos. Then in terms of space itself, you could introduce more negative space. As the, negative, as the space increases, then introducing more negative space allows the user to be able to correctly perceive the elements on the screen. Then the fifth one is reachability. Having the navigation or menu items at, at the bottom of the screen makes sense on a compact device. But then when you're on a expanded or a medium device, having things at the bottom of the screen actually doesn't work because the user tends to use, have their thumbs at, and at the top there and they're not actually gonna be able to reach at the bottom. So these are things that you need to think about as well. So reachability. Then the fifth question to ask about the design is what should be swapped? So as I mentioned in the previous slide about reachability, elements or components on a screen can be swapped or repositioned to take advantage of the additional screen space and also to make things easier for the user to be able to reach these elements. So one such area that have components that are swapped for another is navigation. So on a compact device, it is recommended to have a bottom navigation, as you see there in the top left. Then when you go onto a medium or expanded window size class, then you should either use a nav rail or a permanent navigation drawer. Because in that particular area on the side of the screen, the edge, that's typically where your users will be able to reach in order to be able to navigate between the different screens. Then it should also be noted that the elements that are equivalent in terms of functionality are what should be swapped. So you shouldn't try and swap a button for a menu, for example. Then conceptualizing my design for different window size classes. So as I mentioned at my work, bold.com, I work closely with the product designer in my team and we were able to bring window size classes to life in one of our product offerings. And this close collaboration with my designer led to every component that he designed to actually have three different window size classes. And so we also created um, different features within the app and these features now actually cater for these different window size classes. Now every single user that is, that is gonna be using our app will now have a different experience based on the design or the device they're actually viewing on. So in terms of my personal app, Upnext TV Series Manager, this was not optimized for window size classes. So this was something I had deferred and I was hoping to basically attend to it at some point in time. So I actually reached out to my product designer and asked him if he would be willing to design some window size class designs for my app and he was more than willing to assist. So meet Michiel Besilling. He's a product designer in the Discover product at ball.com and has been with the company for 16 years. He has a very careful eye for detail and someone I've learned a lot from in the past year that I've been with Ball. So the app that you see here, this is my app, Upnext TV Series Manager. It has been in production since 2015 and it's available for download on the Google Play Store ever since. It currently has about 2,000 installations. Yes, I'm proud of that number, it's 2,000. Um, the code for the app is open source and it's also part of the Google Dev Library, which is basically a website or a platform that contains open source projects the end content that use Google tools and technologies which have been curated by Google. All the code that I will share within this presentation, you can find it there, um, and you can just explore and even contribute to, to the project. So I provided Michiel with an overview of the different screens that are inside Upnext TV Series Manager. As you can see, these are the different screens. And through these screenshots, I also provided a description. With this, he was able to get an overview of what is contained in each of the screens, and through careful research, he also referenced the material guidelines and was able to conceptualize the designs for the other window size classes. As you can see here, there are a number of screens that need to be optimized. As a start, we only focused on updating the highlighted screens that you see there, the dashboard, the explore, the account, and the show detail screen and then progressively update the rest of the screens to be window size class optimized. Then here's an overview of the Figma designs for the dashboard, explore, account, and the show detail screen for each of the window size class that Michiel provided me. 
I will break down the proposed changes. For the compact layout, the design includes an updated bottom navigation um, menu order, where the search is now the second uh, item in the list instead of the first one, which I have in the original version. And then the second update is for the top bar to have the Up Next logo in the center updated from just having text. Then for the medium window size class, the design as well as the material guidelines, as I mentioned earlier, suggests the use of the navigation rail. So instead of bottom navigation. This is because ergonomically, it is much easier to reach the menu on the top edge of the device than at the bottom of the screen when it's on a medium or expanded window size class device. Then for the expanded window size class, and because the display is larger, the design as well as the material design guidelines suggest using a permanent navigation drawer, which is basically a navigation drawer that's always open. You don't have to click it to expand it. Then here the design also suggests using a navigation um, rail when the expanded device is in portrait mode. Then here's the proposed design for the show detail screen for the compact window size class. It includes having a distinct title in the top bar. Currently, as you can see, there is no title and only the back navigation arrow is displayed. Then in the middle of the screen, the design suggests using day and night differentiated buttons. So basically having, uh, when it's dark mode, to have the buttons have black text and when it's on light mode, to have the buttons having white text. Then at the bottom of the screen, the design suggests keeping the bottom navigation visible Currently, I'm, I'm hiding it on the screens that you, that you interact with as child screens. Then continuing with the show detail screen, but this time on the medium window size class, is to move the show synopsis and put it next to the poster and airing information instead of below it, basically making the section having three columns. Then the expanded window size class design is similar to the medium window size class, only here the synopsis gets to occupy a bigger space on the screen. And then you can actually see more cast images um, because the screen has now, um, screen space has actually now increased more than what is on the compact and on, on the medium. Then as with any app, app migration, sorry, it's important to make incremental changes. And you should not try to update everything at once. So this is the approach that I was taking as well trying to update certain sections of the app, and I basically split these into three different layers. The first layer that I focused on was the app level um, layer, and this, this layer actually focused on navigation. When the user actually enters the app, what actually happens based on the current window size class configuration. And so my question was, what type of navigation can I provide the user based on the current window size class? That makes sense? and as well as in line with the material guidelines. So my app has only one activity, main activity, and it is in here that the main screen composable, which is basically wrapped in the up next theme, material theme composable. That is, that's where it's called. Then my main screen composable was in charge of setting up the screen that will be displaying the content for the whole app. Inside it is the main scaffold composable, which is just a wrapper composable I created that simply sets up the material scaffold composable that houses the top bar as well as the bottom bar slots. So this scaffold actually has multiple slots, even including the floating action button if you want to add it. So the main scaffold takes a composable as a parameter that represents the main content of the screen that will be displayed. In this case, the content is a nav host composable, which I cr created called app navigation. They're right there at the bottom. Then the app navigation composable is simply a wrapper composable that sets up the destinations nav host composable. That is part of Compose Destinations Library. The main parameters to provide the destinations nav host are the nav graph and the nav controller. Composables that are annotated with at destination are automatically added to the navigation graph. So the nav controller specified here is what will be used to navigate between these nav host um, destinations. So Compose Destination, like I mentioned, so this is a library that I'm actually using within the app. It was created by Rafael Costa. It's a KSP library that processes annotations and generates code that uses the official Jetpack Compose navigation under the hood. 
So it hides the complex, non-type safe and boilerplate code that you'd have to write otherwise. So the idea behind this library is to make compose navigation easier. And all you just need to do is annotate your composables with at destination, and they automatically get added to a navigation graph that it'll generate for you. So I refactored the main screen and renamed it compact screen because it now represented the compact window size class configuration, in particular its use of the bottom app bar. Then I created a medium screen composable, and this one represents the medium window size class configuration. It contains a row composable that will split the screen into two sections or columns. The first column being the nav rail. The nav rail composable is a wrapper composable I created that will set up the material navigation rail composable. My nav rail composable takes two parameters, the current destination that the user is currently on and a lambda function called on nav rail item click, which will be called when an item on the menu is clicked. Then in setting up the material nav rail composable, I pass an attribute of the modifier called test tag. This will allow me to be able to target this specific composable when I'm writing my tests. And I will touch on the testing um, later on. Then to set up the items for the navigation rail, I used my enum class, which I call bottom bar destinations, which contains all the navigation menu items. Here, for each of those navigation menu items, I created a navigation rail item. I then specified the following attributes for the navigation rail item. Selected. This basically defines the selected state of the item by passing a condition which will evaluate and highlight that menu item if the condition is true. Then on click, which will basically the on click action for when a navigation menu item is clicked. Then the icon, which contains the icon information. You can also add a label if you want, but in my case, I decided to, to skip it. I felt it looked nice anywhere without a label. Then the second column of the row uh, composable is for the column, which will contain the top bar as well as the app navigation composables. Basically, this, this forms part of the content that will be displayed for the app. Then for the expanded window size class configuration, I created a, an expanded screen composable, which sets up the material permanent navigation drawer. The permanent navigation drawer is set up by defining the drawer content, which in this case is the permanent drawer sheet, as you see there, which contains navigation drawer items for each of the navigation menu destinations. The content for the permanent navigation drawer is a composable that you pass to it. In this case, I pass a column composable, which contains the top bar as well as app navigation composable, representing the content of the app. Then the second layer, which I was focusing on now, is now the screen level. So when the user of the app is now viewing a particular screen, are they viewing the ideal content or um, the content that is now displayed on the screen itself? Is it configured correctly based on the current window size class? So this is where those five initial questions that I mentioned earlier, this is at the point now where you will then ask those questions. So to recap, what should be revealed? how to divide the screen, what should be resized, what should be repositioned, and what should be swapped. So the main screen composable now has a new responsibility to decide which screen will be rendered based on the current window size class configuration. If it's a compact window size class, it will render compact screen. If it's a medium window size class, it will render medium screen. And if it's an expanded window size class, it will render expanded screen. The main activity will then pass the current window size class configuration to this main screen composable. In Compose, there's a very handy function that you can use called calculate window size class, and that requires the current activity as an argument. Through this, you will have the current window size class configuration. And this is the calculate window size class for whoever is interested to know how it works under the hood. And it basically uses the window metrics calculator to get the current window size class configuration. So the updating the app and then testing, as I mentioned earlier. So it's possible to test the window size class based changes. And because this is a gradual change, as I mentioned, 
um, of the entire app, I started by creating tests that were focused on the main screen composable only. Later, I intend on adding more tests based on the different window size class optimizations that I would have made within the app. So the intent of the test I created here was to ensure that the correct navigation was displayed on the screen based on the current window size class configuration. So because the main screen is the composable responsible for making sure that the screen with the right navigation option is displayed, this is the class that was under test. So I created a main screen test class that resides in the Android test directory, as this is an instrumented test. In other words, a test that will need to run on an Android device. Then my app uses Hilt for dependency injection. And because of that, I needed to create a rule for Hilt that will define um, that this is how you define it inside the class. The order rule that you see there is specified to define what order these rules need to be created. This is specifically important if a rule depends on another rule. So in this case, Hilt actually needs to be instantiated first before any of the other rules are set up. Then I use Work Manager in my app to periodically update the different sections of the app, such as the dashboard, the explorer, as well as the user favorited screens. The rule for Work Manager is also required here for my test to run. It might not be required for your use case, but it was important for mine. Then the last rule I specified is the Compose Test Rule, which is basically using a function called Create Android Rule, Android Compose Rule. And this is the factory method that provides Android specific implementation of the create compose rule and it's tied to an activity and in this case it's tied to main activity. The Hilt rule that I specified earlier requires that the inject rule um, is called before the tests are executed and to do this I specified a function with at before annotation and then this will basically run before every test is actually executed. Then moving on to the tests themselves um, starting with the test for the compact window size class, I created this test um, compact device underscore verify bottom navigation is present. The aim of this test is to verify that the bottom navigation is indeed present on the screen when it's on a compact window size class. So to set up the test, I make use of the compose test rule, accessing the activity, in this case main activity, and then the set content method. So. A library I also made use of as part of my tests was a, a library called Test Harness, which is a library that is part of Accompanist. Now, Accompanist is basically a group of libraries that aim to supplement Jetpack Compose with features that are commonly required by developers but are not yet available. So Test Harness is a composable function which takes a single slot of the UI that is under test and in the form of composable content and then you can specify parameters that override the default configuration of the UI that is under test. So by using this library, I can actually provide override parameters that can update the default size configuration to match that of a specific window size class. So with test, test harness, I'm able to provide, amongst other parameters, a size parameter. And in this case, I can specify DP dimensions of a compact window size class. Then the main screen composable is now bound by the test harness configuration. So in other words, a screen whose dimensions are 200 by 600 dp, I then also pass the compact window size class as an argument to the main screen. Then my only assertion for this test is, is whether the bottom bar is actually displayed on the screen. So I can target the bottom bar on the screen through the modified or test tag, which I mentioned earlier. So I added it here with the value bottom underscore app underscore bar. Then I created a test for the medium window size class configuration, this time checking for whether the navigation rail is present. Using test harness, I specified the size to be 600 by 480 dp, and then passing the uh, medium width window size class. And then for the assertion, I checked for the, existing, the existence of the navigation rail using the navigation underscore rail test tag. Then for the expanded window size class, the test is to determine whether the navigation drawer is present. And then to match the expanded window size class, I specified a size of 840 
um, by 480 dp, and I passed the expanded window size class to the main screen composable. Then for the assertion, I check for whether the permanent navigation drawer is actually displayed on the screen using the navigation under, underscore drawer test tag. So with this, my test to verify whether the correct navigation is displayed per window size class is complete. So with time, I can add more tests to the list to verify even more sections of the app that are based on window size classes. So for now, this will suffice. As I mentioned earlier, the changes to the entire app are gradual. I will not be doing all of them at once. So the third um, layer is to update the different components that are on the different screens. So basically making sure that they adapt and respond correctly when on a specific window size class configuration. There are some composables that already have this functionality um, already built into them, such as the box with constraints composable. But in this case, I'm not using box with constraints. So one thing that was very useful for me while I was doing this, these changes for the different window size classes is the previews within Android Studio. And so they actually helped me to be able to differentiate between the different window size classes. And in this case, I created an annotation class called reference devices. And this can help me see previews across a range of configurations, basically all at once within the Android Studio um, preview pane. So with this, I can actually see a preview for a phone, for a foldable, for a large screen device, like a large tablet and a desktop. And I can even add more. Then in my code, when I annotate the composable with at reference devices, this is what I can see in the preview part of Android Studio. A whole range of different types of previews across the different configurations that I specified. So going to the changes for the components themselves, the poster images that are displayed for the screens where a list is used show an array of shows. So in order to align with the designs that was provided by Michiel, the height of the images needed to be adjusted slightly to, just to take advantage of the bigger screen space and reduced on smaller screens. Then here's the poster image composable um, on the left hand side. So this is how it was before. And what I only needed to adjust here was the height to take the, its value based on the current window size class. So I created a helper variable inside the composable file, which returns a DP value based on a particular window size class. So for a compact, I want a height of 170. For medium, I want 175. For expanded, I want 200. Then instead of using the diamond resource um, reference, I use the helper variable list poster height. Now it will react accordingly based on the current window size class configuration. Then for the compact window size class, only the height of the poster cards was updated slightly. The bottom navigation remained in place to stay in line with the designs as well as the material guidelines. For the medium window size class, the height of the poster images was also increased slightly. The bottom navigation was replaced with the navigation rail, as you can see in the after. Then for the medium window size class, the height of the poster images was also increased slightly, and then the bottom navigation was replaced with the permanent navigation drawer, sorry, for expanded layout. Then the account screen uses a lazy vertical grid, and it was previously fixed for three cells, which works very nicely on a compact device, but as it expanded on a, on a medium or a, on an expanded layout, it actually didn't work out well. So having it fixed to grid cells that fix three is actually not, not ideal if you want to cater for the different window size classes. So I then updated it so that the grid cells configuration is different per window size class. So in a compact device, a fixed count of three, on a medium window size class, four, and on an expanded window size class to use grid cells dot adaptive. And then I specified a minimum size of 140 dp for the poster image size. Then I assigned this to the columns variable. Then I updated the lazy vertical grid to make use of this new variable. Then changing it from grid cells fixed dot three to use the columns variable. 
And then with that, the account screen is optimized where the lazy vertical grid responds to the current window size class. And then it uses the correct configuration for the columns. So you can see from three to four to expand it. So what's next? So the documentation on the Android developers website provides a checklist to help developers know their apps, whether their apps are fully ready to support the different window size class configurations, as well as the different features that are part of the range of devices that are on the market. So my goal, like I mentioned earlier, is to gradually update my app. So I want to get it to tier one, uh, but to get there, I have to take basic steps by making moderate changes over time. So right now my app is likely between tier two and tier three, so still a lot of work. However, the greater device support, the better for my users and possible higher user engagement. So tier three is basically your app was deployed to a tablet or a desktop or a foldable. What would happen? Would it crash? Would it be... Um, centralized in the center of the device where you're going to have black bars on the side. Basically, this is called letterboxing. Um, will, it, um, will the users be able to navigate from one screen to the next? Basically, are they able to, fo to follow a correct flow within the app? So this is something that forms part of this tier. So are you able to um, have an app that's actually working when it's in tier three? Tier two, the app implements layout optimizations for all the screen sizes and device configurations. In other words, making changes that keep in mind the screen size and device configuration, and it also responds to that. Then tier one, this is where your app stands out. It provides the users with a tailored experience for the device which they're on. Be it a tablet, a Chrome OS device, a foldable device, whatever device they're viewing on. An example is to use the window metrics to determine if the device is in a folded state or tabletop, and then detecting if the foldable device has a hinge in the middle or not. So in terms of resources, these are the different resources that you can actually find from the, ranging from the developers website, uh, developers.android.com website to the material design website. And then if you want to see my code for Upnext TV Series Manager, the link is there. And if you want to know how to, um, the com compatibility checks that I mentioned, this is the, w the link that you can see there. And grazie. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you from, from the chat.